Right now, uh, Desiree, would you please share with us what were the things that you struggled in life and how your life was before you received Jesus Christ? Well, um, I was using drugs at an early age, at 12. And um, basically from 12 to last year that it was like nonstop and um, it was just I struggled with that addiction and so in 2016 I came to I came from Texas to Washington and so it was like um, you know uh, uh, cocaine marijuana pills and it, when I came here it switched up to meth and psychedelics so it was like a mixture of everything and um liquor like I would drink like two bottles of liquor every single day I smoked cigarettes probably like six packs a day every day and it was I was like secluded from everything like I was just isolated and it was just like a little space like a little closet that I was in there every single day for two years I wouldn't go out, I wouldn't even, you know, walk, exercise, none of that stuff. So basically I struggled with that and it, that was like just the main thing, um, drugs. I know that you said that you have two children that you had to send the way back to Texas for grandparents to take care of them, right? Because you could not take care of your children? Yes. Um, so they came with me in 2016 and they were with me for about two months and then I sent them back to Texas. Because um, I knew that they had to go to school and I wasn't going to be selfish and be like, okay, well, you guys are going to be here with me. and Or, you know, when somebody's frustrated because they do drugs and they're like, oh, you know, go, go away or whatever. I didn't want to do that to them. So they went to Texas and, well, that's why I decided to make that change for them. So when I get back to them, I'll be the mom that God wants me to be. Praise God. Um, would you please also touch on a subject how you got involved during your uh, last two years of doing drugs here in Chai Cities. You got involved into the witchcraft and how that affected your life as well. Um, well it was just um, I had so much time it was um, so I was searching on um, you know the Google App Store and there's these apps where um, you can um, channel spirit boxes so I channeled, um, I think it was a Spain spirit box. So um, it's like three different channels and uh, it's a whole bunch of static. And once it catches something or um, an entity or something demonic, it will, you'll hear it. So I had the headphones on all day, all day, just with the headphones on, hearing that static, hearing spirits communicate with me, I would even sleep with it. So when I would wake up, it was like, I was already, I already knew that they were in my home. I already knew that I had opened a portal. So um, I, I started looking for more. I started just, um, you know, lighting incense and a whole bunch of like demonic stuff that I had played around with. So it was idea to do that so it even got to the point of the blood that you had to go through the like kind of a blood stuff and uh how did this affect you personally on a daily basis dembling into this occultic stuff um well i started like just without even the headphones i would i was having a battle in my mind like with it it was like just everything that i would do like if i would if I would go out somewhere, it was like, um, I would hear them like, you know, like just talking to me and stuff like that. And it was just like, I couldn't be anywhere out in public because, or I had, a, I, it was, I guess, to isolate me more. Um, that's, I guess that was like what it was. Oh yeah. Um, also, uh, it came to the point where I was like physically tormented. Like I could feel them like scratching me. I could feel them like... Like if they were just like literally attacking me and I would have like panic attacks and um, I would literally see scratches on myself and um, yeah, it was bad. That is crazy. So um, with all this going, uh, going on with you, how did you come about the church and what caused you to look for God and what happened when you came to church? 
Um, well, it came to the point where it was like, okay, so every day you're using drugs and it's like, okay, so at first it could be cool. It could be like, okay, yeah, well, you know, yeah, you turn on some music and you're jamming out. But then it comes to the point where it's like, you can't even, you can't even do the drug without like going through torment. So it was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I'm going crazy in my mind. I'm, I'm not going to end up in a psychiatric hospital. So I came, I came over here to Hungry Gen, and um, this was in August 2018. And who, somebody invited you? Did you search it up online? Yeah, I searched it up on Google. So I searched it up, and then I came here. And so the first day um, I came here, I accepted Christ in my heart. And then after that, I got baptized. Come on, you guys. Our God is so good. The Lord touched her on the first service and I want you to hear what happened afterwards with her life and tell us all what happened. What is the difference that you see now in your life? Well, um, uh, so I had been jobless since like 2016 and I guess like when you accept Christ in your heart, you have to like take a step forward. Like you have to do something to make that change you can't just you know like oh I accept the Christ okay let the good things come no you have to actually take that step and just change the way you think like you can't think like okay well I'm limited to everything I'm, I'm I can't do this you're able to um I started going to school now um I'm almost done in October for a medical assistant and um uh I, come on you guys <laughs> Tell us, have you used, are, are you still using drugs? Have you used, a, do you have any cravings? And uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, I don't, I think of drugs as now like, well, either you're, either you're with God or you're with the enemy. You can't, you can't have one foot here and then one foot on the, yeah. Um, and plus I've spent too much money on drugs. Um, too much money on drugs. So... <laughs> Um, I was in this Greyhound accident um, in 2010, and I got a settlement of $50,000. I spent all that money on drugs. So, you know, if, you know, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I, I feel better. Life is better. You feel alive. You don't, you don't need to feel like, oh, well, I need this to feel better. Yeah, it's, I mean, just with Christ alone, you're... Praise God. Come on, let's put our hands together for Jesus. I want you to guys know one thing. It's good that God set her free from so many years of doing drugs. Like she was 12 when she started doing drugs. Up to 25 years of age. Up to 25 years of age. And that's a big addiction right there. And Jesus Christ just broke that addiction. But the main point is that she received salvation of her soul. From going to hell with being with Jesus Christ forever. And that's the main point in Jesus name. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together one more time for Jesus. Jesus, we're just so so happy for you we just rejoice and just blown away every time people share their stories would you please share a word of advice to people who might have not given their lives to Jesus Christ yet and maybe they're struggling with drug addiction or whatever it is what would you tell them um, don't don't be afraid to see Christ don't don't be embarrassed um, and just trust God and just like trust in yourself and just make that change like take that step but don't be afraid to reach out amen thank you so much desiree we thank you thank you for watching this content i know this was a blessing to you we would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something you can be notified don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.